the book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 1. I will love thee, O Lord, Yahweh, in the name of your only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, my strength. The Lord Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. To the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, be the glory forever and ever. The Spirit, I want to get into this event that took place in London so-called terrorist attack outside the British Parliament and just to warn the sheep, the little ones, the, the believers, those that follow after who the world who calls Christ whose real name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shad and that believe the testimony of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten and Son is the Word of God, the Holy Bible. As a sign of things that we need to be aware of, this is a serious event that those that claim to be in the faith should take heed to and be aware of. This is from rt.com slash UK. The title of this article is called London Terrorist Attack Outside British, British Parliament What We Know. A terrorist attack shook central London on Wednesday with at least five people killed and 40 more injured. RT shares what details are known so far. What happened? The car reportedly crossed Westminster Bridge moving down pedestrians on its way to the UK Houses of Parliament. An eyewitness, Richard Tice, told RT for the whole length of the bridge from south to north there were people lying on the ground and I was then told that a car had driven from the south and end all the way up the pavement to the north end of the bridge. The car hit the railing surrounding the parliament buildings. The police officer was stabbed at the carriage gates and the assailant shot. You see, and to those that have their eyes open, aware of what's going on, you know, March 22nd is a very satanic day. It's a very unholy day in the eyes of these banker families, these secret society members, these people known as uh, the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, DuPonts, okay, the children of the wicked who know that they go back to the biblical lineage of the children of Esau, Edom, so-called Caucasians, whose birthright is the blessing, they worship Satan, the adversary, and on days like this is a very high, um, unholy day, satanic day, pagan day for them to shed blood as an offering onto the devil. So when you see certain things like this, okay, as far as what could be considered as a terrorist attack on this very day, it's something that you got to question, especially when these other articles I'm going to go into bring a lot of concerns and questions to what really is the agenda okay warlike law martial law so-called new world order novos auto seclorum where they're trying to get this one world government underway to where the people are basically scared and, and volunteer up their actual rights to be given protection under police observation military observation no laws no constitution, no amendments, just straight up warlike law. And this event right here is something that's going to cater to that um, paperwork or cater to that action being made. Well, all these different laws are just done away with. And as a, and as a believer of the Lord, you got to be aware of these things, man. You got to be aware of the signs of the times, essentially. Okay, reading on into this article, it says attacker and motives. The alleged attacker has not been identified. The assailants is thought to have acted alone. We think we know who the attacker is, said acting Metropolitan Police Deputy Commissioner Mark Rowley, Britain's most senior counterterrorism officer. He 
added that police were not willing to divulge the assailant's name at this time, although Islamic terrorism is our assumption. We've declared this a terrorist incident in the Common Terrorism Command and are carrying out a full-scale investigation into the events today, Raleigh told reporters. And as far as the war on terror or using Islamic terrorism, Islamic uh, radicalism as a means of the boogeyman, essentially the war on terror, you do your research, you'll find out that this war on terror is, is, is a lie. All this is pretend to basically put bring forth their agenda to spread forth this satanic regime. A war on terror, America, EU, NATO, especially America who's known as Biblical Babylon the Great, according to the scriptures. They're using this war on terror, these banking families, to go into these different regions to enact their so-called democracy, demon philosophy. To bring their military in these different countries so they can snatch up the natural resources of these different lands and also spread forth their military. Things like this, as far as using Islamic terrorism as, as an assumption, okay, as an assumption, as the big bad boogeyman, they're using this as an excuse to basically bring forth martial law, bring forth um, scare tactics for the people to be frightened and to volunteer, okay, their rights to be taken away from them. Don't be fooled by events like these and... and Think that it's a coincidence that all of a sudden Islam is being used as a threat, especially the lack of evidence in regards to who's the ones to blame. Once again, other articles that shall be brought out, Lord willing, will further explain that that notion, not assumption, but that notion. Reading on, it says, Victims, five people are dead, including police officer PC Keith Palmer, a 15 year veteran of the force and the attacker. The three other victims were pedestrians hit by the car. At this stage, but it may change, we believe approximately 40, pe 40 people were injured, including three police officers, Raleigh said. Reading on, St. Thomas Hospital says it is treating people with catastrophic injuries after the vehicle reportedly mounted the pavement on the bridge and tried to mow people down. Shocking videos and photos show people lying on the bridge bleeding heavily with distraught members of the public rushing to their aid. Lockdown, okay? Lawmakers were kept on lockdown inside the parliament buildings while police secured the scene. The tourists were trapped on the nearby London Eye for about three hours. Downing Street says Prime Minister Theresa May will chair a cabinet office briefing room, COBRA, emergency meeting on Wednesday night. May is safe after the incident, Downing Street said. Okay, and this, once again, is all in tune with this new order of the ages to basically lock down society, right? These are some of the things that you got to be aware of. It's not no coincidence when they speak about terrorism going out throughout the world, especially in familiar places or highly populated places, whether it's America or London, because these things are all, you know, whether it's staged in itself, whether someone who claims to actually believe in Islam is responsible for this and he got courted in by the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, or basically baited by MK Ultra. Do, do your research, you'll find out what's actually going on in the society. To find out how satanic the society is, you'll find out how left-handed uh, witchcraft and, and iniquity is being worshipped in the society, even though, especially in America, they're supposed to consider this place a God-fearing nation. The Bible is the law of the land. When it's not just a UK thing, it's not just a United Kingdom thing, okay? Because here, even in America or even in New York, the police department, NYPD, was bolstered up with heavy military equipment. Assault rifles, man. Right? And it's supposed to be a police department. And here it is right here. This is from uh, Breaking911.com. Abu Izzadeen, a.k.a. Trevor Brooks, reportedly reported by local media to be London terror suspect. And who does that look like? 
They, they consider Islam to be the big bad boogeyman of Ishmael, so-called Arabs, but who they got here? So-called black man, the so-called Negro, which when you do your research, you find out that those of Negro, Indian, Latino, and Hispanic descent are really the biblical Israelites the Bible speaks of, the lost sheep of the nation of Israel. Brothers out there on the, on the highways and byways, on the street corners, preaching the word and sincerity and the truth, preaching the downfall of wickedness, preaching the downfall of Babylon, the great America. These are the things that of being equated to radical Islam, so-called Negroes. With this this fellow right here, okay, he may be caught up in a stumbling block of Islam because the Lord ain't dealing with Islam. The Quran is not the word of the Lord. The Lord don't care about uh, the Quran or these other nations. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Holy Bible. Okay, the Quran is not to be mixed with the Holy Scriptures. But as far as this lost uh, so-called Negro, Trevor Brooks, very well could be an Israelite according to the according to the prophecies in Genesis the 49th chapter and Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, Old Testament, New Testament, even the Apocrypha, the Holy Scriptures. This man may very well be okay uh, lost in the in the stumbling block, aka the religion of Islam. But this is the thing, though. This is the main thing that you got to pay attention to. It says Abu is a Dean, aka Trevor Brooks, reported by local media to be London terror suspect. Okay, it says all claims regarding the suspect identity are based on media reports and have not been confirmed by authorities. Abu Izzadeen, also known as Trevor Books, was reported to be the terrorist behind the attack in London Wednesday, according to local media. Many of these news outlets have retracted their claims. Why? Because what do they push? Essentially, what are they pushing about this person? Okay, go to UK's. Um, Abu Izzadeen suspect attack. Let's see what they have to say about this fellow right here. It says, UK, uh, this is from RT News, by the way. UK's Channel 4 News forced to backtrack on claims jailed hate preacher was behind the London attack. You see? For a while, they tried to put it out that this fellow, Trevor Brooks, a.k.a. Abu Izzadeen, is the one that was behind the uh, London so-called terrorist attack and they claimed him to be a hate preacher what a hate preacher someone who claims religious zeal speaking the words of who he claims to be God and hate when really if you look at what's considered as uh, the Holy Bible once again Old, Two Old Testament New Testament even the Apocrypha King James 1611 verification scriptures there's a lot of hate written inside the word of the Lord. The Heavenly Father doesn't love everyone. He doesn't care about these other nations. But for something that you should understand is, it says, UK's Channel 4 News forced to backtrack on claims jailed hate preacher was behind London attack. We want to get some scriptures, but we want to read on in this article before we, before we jump into that. Because all this filters into what's written inside the word of the Lord. If you claim to be a Christian, you claim to be a follower of Christ, which the word Christ just means anointed, these are things that you got to be aware of and you got to warn the sheep about. Let them know, look, it's, it's not just a regular so, uh, late day in March. There's a lot of there's a lot of satanic things going on in society and you got to watch the news. You got to be aware of what's going on. You can't just be glued to your TV or interested in what's going on in the movies or being bottled down by your jobs. Those who have employment, those who have families, you're not supposed to be all caught up in, in your children in the sense that you're not able to be aware of what's going on. Now nah, you got to watch the news. You got to look for the clues. You got to look for the prophecies, the signs of the times. Because this right here is something that will lead us closer and closer to our deliverance. With the one the war even calls Jesus Christ, whose real name is Yahweh makes his second coming. And look at that right there. It's all right, though. All praises be to Yahweh in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah. Even though this thing want to have technical difficulties, it's all right, though. The word of the Lord is still going to go out. Still going to go out. Okay, right here it says, Britain, Britain's Channel 4 News has backtracked on a report naming a known hate preacher. <laughs> okay, a known hate preacher 
as the man behind an attack on Parliament in London. Channel 4 claim Abu Izzadeen, also known as Trevor Brooks from Hackney in London, was the suspect. The news was quickly also reported by mainstream newspapers, including the Independent and the Daily Mirror. But claims soon followed that the man is in fact currently serving time in jail. Izzadeen's solicitor was quoted by U.S. Channel ABC as saying his client was still in jail and could not have been the attacker. And, and then you got reports on Twitter of people verifying this information. Trevor Brooks, a.k.a. Abu Izzadeen, solicitor confirms to me that he is still in jail and CLD could not have been the attacker today at hashtag Westminster. Several media outlets are claiming London killer is Abu Izzadeen, but his solicitor has confirmed he is still in jail. Nick Lowe's, Ryan uh, Momtards, you know, pardon me if, if these names are pronounced wrong, but you get the gist of it though. You see, and here it is, reporter from Channel 4 have also since backtracked, adding that Izzadeen's brother confirmed the Islamist is still in prison. Come on now. But that didn't, that didn't stop that didn't stop these reporters, that didn't stop the uh, local news, that didn't stop the newspapers from letting it be known their assumption that this man was behind this stuff. Come on now, what the hell is really going on? You gotta ask yourself these things and not be so simple minded and believe in everything that you've been taught by the news, man. The news is controlled. They're not gonna give you the truth. They're just trying to formulate your mind on what they want you to believe. Hate preacher, people preaching hate. Okay, people claiming religious uh, authority, speaking the words of who they consider as gods, to be to be hate if it upsets people. Well, here it is. It's this Twitter feed. You can look it up for yourself. George MacMillan. Okay, they're going into how basically. This 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 can't be the case. This man can't be responsible for what took place. He wasn't there. He was in jail. Okay. Come on now. What what are they really trying to do? So-called black man hate preacher. Really? And as far as you bank accounts, man, yep, I get sloppy, man. All this, you know. Predictive programming, you trying to scare the people, scare tactics, and, and switch up the news to fit your agenda. Y'all getting sloppy with it, man. Y'all getting sloppy with it. See, it's things like this. You claim to be in the truth, you claim to be in the faith. If, if you really are a fellow believer, if you really are of the household of faith, and, and those that really claim to love God see something like this, you're supposed to rejoice. This ain't supposed to be something that's going to make you nervous. This ain't supposed to be something that's going to make you fearful. Okay, look, this is the book of 2 Corinthians in the New Testament, chapter 2, verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The devil's devices, man. The devil is the deceiver. The children of the wicked, these Edomites, these Rothschilds, these banker families, the ones that pay off these different news anchors to bring out the reports that they want to be brought out to the sub to the society. To paint their image of what's going on, to formulate the people's minds to believe what they want to believe. They try to make it seem like this fella is, is behind this uh, attack as a hate preacher. That he was physically there, but how can that be the case when he was in jail once again? Lest Satan, the adversary, should get an advantage of us, but we are not ignorant of his devices, man. And that media, that news outlet, is a device of the adversary. These Rothschilds, these banking families. Because for the spiritual demon, say you read up in the book of Job, he works for the Heavenly Father. He, did, he can't do anything unless the Most High gives him that command. Look it up, man. The book of Job. Scriptures tell you that the Lord is the one that killeth and maketh alive. So as far as Satan, these demons, they're on his left hand. But as far as the people in the flesh that worship Satan, that worship the adversary, that worship the deceiver, the devil, this is their works. These are the things that they, they want to trick the people into believing. Why? Once again, to pull forth their agenda. And, and looking further into it, okay, it all aligns with prophecy. This is not going to stop the will of the Lord. 
the judgment of the Heavenly Father from raining down upon society, raining upon America, destroying America during the Third World War, nuclear war, the war to end all wars, the war of Armageddon, as written of in the book of Revelation, okay? America is a bloody, filthy, wicked, and, uh, and treacherous country. It was stolen from the natural inhabitants here. So-called native Seminole Mexican Indians, Gadites, Reubenites, Issacharites, according to the Holy Bible, members of the 12 lost tribes of the nation of Israel, the Lord's chosen people, Esau, the thief, the devil, okay, the devil in the flesh, they came through and stole this land, man. They stole this land from the people that were, working, that were living here, inhabiting here. They made our brothers, uh, those of Negro, West Indian, Haitian descent, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, amongst the other tribes, come over here on cargo slave ships to work this land for free. Scriptures tell you that there's a penalty if you build a, a, a town with blood. Habakkuk, the second chapter. Woe to the bloody city, Nahum, the third chapter. You reap what you sow. All this, all this witchcraft and all this wickedness that's been pushed out in the society by Okay, by these bankers, by these at least by these Edomites, and you other nations too, and you other nations too. Ishmael ain't gonna get off the hook. So-called Arabs, Moab, so-called Chinese, and then so-called Japanese. I'm not getting off the hook either. Even even you so-called Africans, Hamites, according to the Bible, and you so-called Aboriginals, Japites, according to the Bible. Yeah, the other nations, man. Yeah, the natural Gentiles. Yeah, the natural heathens. Y'all not going to get off the hook when this judgment comes. But these are just things to just show you how closer we are to getting to the Lord making this second coming. But prior to that, this is what the scriptures say. This is the book of Mark, St. Mark chapter 13 in the New Testament, verse 1. And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus who this word even calls Jesus, whose real name in Hebrew is Yahushai, a so-called dark-skinned man with white woolly hair, eyes as if as if they uh, flame of fire, burn bronze skin, as if it burned in a furnace, and Yahushai answering, who Yahushai means the deliverer, he deliverer, the deliverer for his people, and the chosen of his people specifically, the elect. And Yahushai answering said on to him, Seest thou these these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Okay, that applied to the ancient Roman society back then and even to this modern day Roman society. Because the same political agenda, the same type of pagan customs, the same type of people, whether they call themselves Romans or Greeks, Edomites, so-called Caucasians, these banking families, who pass on their wealth from generation to generation, they're still the same people ruling. So as far as no stone that shall not be left thrown down applied to Rome back then, that applies today. That applies to America, that applies to Babylon, that applies to UK, that applies to Russia, that applies to all these nations, man. When the Lord comes back, he's coming back to bring destruction, judgment, deliverance for his elect law, one and one part of that. Those that seek the Lord ten times more, repent and turn back from their sins. Do what they can do to, to show the Lord their appreciation for dying on the cross, being risen up after the third day to, in glory to bring us back to the Heavenly Father. Those that know that, just like how the Lord taught the people, presented his body as a living sacrifice, we got to do the same thing no matter if they call us hate preachers or not. It's to edify the sheep, to warn the sheep, and also to prophesy, meaning say before what's going to happen against these other nations, man. The Lord didn't forget about all the wickedness that's going on in this earth. And no matter what type of agenda they have, no matter what type of new world order plans or schemes they have, it's all going to come to naught. Because the Lord ain't with it, man. Reading on, it says in that verse 3, Mark chapter 13, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Yahweh shot, who this war ignorant calls Jesus, answering them, 
began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Which that name or word Christ just simply means a murder. You got a lot of people being deceived by those claiming to know Christ or claiming to be Christ or claiming to be anointed to teach the word of the Lord. Whether it be in the, in the Catholic Church, Christianity, religion, or claim to be in the truth as Israelites. You got to really watch what these people say, man. You got you got wolves out there in, in sheep's clothing. Hirelings. People that are making merchandise of the sheep. People that are lead, leading the sheep astray. People that are not warning, okay, the little ones, the sheep, the, the those that love the Lord, they're not warning them of the times that are to come. They're not warning the Lord's chosen people. They're not, yo, they're not even warning those that are in the faith about the things that's going on. And let it be known that the only way you're going to be able to be delivered out of these times is if you trust in the Lord and seek the Lord's grace and mercy. Repent, turn back onto him sorrowful. That's the only way you're going to be able to make it out of this chaos that's getting ready to come. But to those that are deceiving the sheep, you got to be mindful of it, man. As the scripture says, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, sets you free. Blessed is he that readeth. You got to go into these scriptures to see what these people are saying is true. Because what they consider as hate preach is actually truth speech. John 17 and 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is thy truth. Okay, so reading on in this Mark chapter 13 verse 7. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be not troubled. For such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. And what are you hearing on in this society? War, war, rumors of war, Third World War, North Korea, South Korea, Iran, them Israelis, fake Jews over there, and Khazars, and gutter rats, and Edomites, that's who's over there in the Holy Land. Okay, what is America going to do with all these other nations? What is Russia going to do with America? Wars, rumors of wars, even race wars, especially in America. Racial tension, so-called Donald Trump, an Edomite, talking about making America great again. When America's great heyday was when our forefathers was in slavery, okay? So with all that in mind, you see what's going on. Wars and rumors of wars. We living in the time of war, not the time of peace. We have peace through this gospel, through this good news that the kingdom of heaven is nigh at hand. And that the Lord died for our sins. The nation of Israel, meaning the Israelites. Yasha Allah, meaning he, prince of the power. He died was crucified, raised up after the third day to bring us closer to the Heavenly Father for redemption, forgiveness of sins, for our sins to be blotted out if we repent and seek after the Lord. That's where the peace comes in, but we're not living in a time of peace. We're living in a time of war. We're living in a time of judgment. So don't be fearful. Don't be scary that these things are taking place. Just know and, and hold fast onto your faith, as the scriptures say. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. Famines, troubles, race wars, racial tension, nation versus nation, kingdom against kingdom, the poor versus the rich, the middle class versus uh, the upper class. All these things get ready to come. Famine, cannibalism, lack of food, martial law, warlike law. These are the things that's getting ready to take place. Pestilence, disease warfare. Society that you know is going to be flipped upside down, man. It's going to be rearranged and, and thrown out the frame for this little picture society people got in their head in La La Land. Not paying attention to what's written up inside the scriptures, man. When these things take place and brothers ain't out there teaching, know that as the scripture says, these are the beginning of sorrows. Verse 9, but take heed to yourself. For they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues you shall be beaten, you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake for a testimony against them. So regardless of this truth, this holy gospel, this, this word, this, this loving labor, this wisdom, not an understanding, the word of the holy bible, man. Despite if people want to say it's hate speech or equate it onto ISIS or Islam or the Quran or terrorism, because that's essentially what they're trying to do. They're not going to really distinguish Hebrew, Israelite, black Hebrew. Nah, they're just going to equate it all to Islam, terrorism. 
That's something you can't be negligent of. That's something you can't be ignorant of, man. And if we very well have to be delivered and, and brought to these concentration camps, detention centers, court systems, these rigged up bullshit court systems, because their law doesn't go according to the law, statutes, commandments of the Bible, if we got to get put into those situations, guess what, man? Our Lord went through it, so how much more us? The servant isn't greater than his master, the disciple is not above his Lord, as the scriptures say, as it is written. But take heed unto yourself. But these people shall deliver us up, okay, to them places, even in the synagogues or what you people consider as churches. Or even those that claim to be in the truth and have chief places of worship. Because that's essentially what a synagogue is, a place of worship, chief house of worship. Those claiming to be in the truth, yo, a lot of these congregations, man, that are that are ruled by sellouts, that are ruled by people that have sold their soul to deceive the flock, to not teach the truth, to not warn about the prophecies, to hold back the whole dispensation of the gospel. A lot of them is going to turn on their flock, especially as the, as the squeeze comes more. But if you get put into these situations where you're above these rulers or in the face of, of these people, especially even if you have to get afflicted or beaten, you're supposed to take it, man. Take it and know that it's a testimony against them. Against them. A testimony, okay? Knowing that it's not us that speak. It's the words of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, that speak through us. Well, praise do be unto Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shah. Because this is his role, this is his movie, this is his word. As servants of the Lord, those that claim to love the Lord, claim to, to worship the Heavenly Father and Spirit and the truth, the prophets, those that know what's getting ready to happen before it takes place in this society, these are things that you got that you gotta volunteer yourself for and, and have it geared in your mind that look that kingdom come thy will be done you see because even the lord he was weak in the flesh because the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak he even prayed to the heavenly father that he may not have to go through the cup that was set before him meaning persecuted beaten laughed at scorned mocked whipped lashed flesh torn off his body a crown of thorns put on his head a heavy cross to have to bear. People mocking him. His own people turning against him. False accusations, false accusers. Setting up trial against him to suffer, to get put to death. He prayed thrice to not have to go through that. But the Lord strengthened him. Because he wasn't looking for, for his sake. He, he asked for these things to take place. Because as it is written, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, but not for his sake, but for thy sake. If it's not a part of the Lord's heavenly father's will, then for him to be blessed with strength to be able to handle what he had to go through. And that's exactly the same mentality that we have to have in these last days. Verse 10, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. Why? Because our people have been scattered amongst all nations, according to the curses. According to the curses... Our people been scattered throughout all the earth. You got Israelites that may not look Negro, Latino, or Hispanic, or Native American, Native Seminole Indian. But you know what? This word goes out. This gospel goes out regardless. This good news. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit that speaketh within you. You see, you don't got to worry about a speech or, or a plea bargain. Now, if you know what time it is regarding this truth, you know that in them situations, the Lord is going to give you the words to speak. You ain't got to explain your situation and how you're not an Islamic terrorist or anything like that. Nah. They're not looking for you to have a, have a lawyer to, to flip the case or anything like that, man. During the time of martial law, warlike law, they're going to do away with the amendments, the Constitution. All that paperwork is going to be nullified, man. The NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, means that they can detain any American citizen under any type of accusation of them being involved with terrorist activity. And you will not have 
a fair trial. You will not have the right to an attorney. You will not be given a lawyer. You will just be detained, thrown into a concentration camp, and your faith will be tested. Verse 12, Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. You see what's going on? Just like it happened in the ancient world, that's what's going to happen in these last days. These are things you got to be made mindful. And for those of you that claim to be in the faith, those of you that claim to love the Lord, but can't serve the Lord out of, out of fear of what your parents will say, or out of fear of how your loved ones is going to look at you, how your spouse may look at you, how your husband may look at you, how your children may look at you. Well, you know what? In these times that come, guess what? Them same people, as the Lord said, thy enemy shall be they of your own household. Especially if you're looking into what's going on in society and trying to warn people about it, trying to get your household in order, and everyone is under the same vibration, you cannot put it past yourself that these people that you claim as family, as friends, as loved ones, as acquaintances, as neighbors, you can't put it past you that they won't turn on you. If they don't care about the Lord, what makes you think they're going to care about you? Especially in times when they're talking about rewards. Or if their loved ones get questioned and their back is against the line, you think people will really rather die? You think people are really uh, actually out for your best interest? You think people really love you just because they say that for a little word? You think people really trust you? You think people really got faith in the Lord to have to suffer and not give up uh, fellow worshipers? Even though we're not even pushing terrorism. We're not even pushing grabbing guns to try to take the society down. The Lord is the one that's going to bring the society down. We're going to be blessed with spiritual power. Lord willing soon to be joint heirs with the Lord. Power that, you, that a man will fly. Power that a man will run with eagle's wings. Okay? Fly and, and run to the point of it's going to look like this man is the flash. Faster than the speed of light. That's the times that we live in. That's the power that we're looking for. It ain't nothing to, to pray to the Lord. Okay, and ask for that. Because it's written up inside the scriptures. So these are the things that we're looking for. These are the times that we live in. But to other people that ain't got that vibration on them, you got to be mindful. If they can't see the gospel, they can't see the heavenly things, then how are they going to see earthly things? If they tripping on your zeal of going to church or tripping in your zeal and doing the work or tripping on your zeal of being amongst brothers, what makes you think they're not going to turn you in? What, what, what really makes you think they're going to be right or die for you if they got an issue with the Lord before our hell breaks loose, before the beginning of sorrows? You got to be mindful of these things. And for you people, those of you that are young, okay, this is serious. This is serious. But some of y'all that's claiming, oh, your parents don't want you to to, to go out and hear the word of the Lord or, or be up into them scriptures or watching the news so much. This scripture says, Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. Is that serious? Your loved ones may try to cause you to be put to death. You really think the people that you care about love you? To be able to willing to die for you, you're gonna see in that time. You're gonna see in that time. Especially people that got issues with this truth or those that's involved with this truth and all hell hasn't even broken the rules yet. You're gonna see where everyone's faith is at. Including me because I'm saying this. I'm not exempt from this. I'm hoping that me trying to warn the sheep is gonna give me a, a, a opportunity to show my faith to the Heavenly Father to be blessed with strength that if my back is pushed against the wall, then so be it. Strive for the truth until death, man. Even if I got to die for my family's sake. Scripture says, greater love have no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. That's what I'm hoping for. But spiritually, to show that I'm willing to do that, I got to physically warn the sheep. Regardless if they consider this hate speech. So reading on, verse 13, Mark, St. Mark chapter 13. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai, that's the name of His only begotten Son. And ye shall be hated for all men, of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And nobody saved yet. Through this grace, grace and mercy of this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, the Lord has blessed us with all praises be unto Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai. We 
he have this knowledge, but none of us are saved, man. You got to wait until the very end to see who's going to be saved. We're just living in the, be in the beginning of our faith being tested. So the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down on to you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. When you got little events like this, so-called terrorist attack over there in um, UK by a so-called hate preacher who wasn't even there, you, you got to rejoice at these things. Rejoice ye heavens, because the angels are rejoicing. The Lord is rejoicing. All these are signs of what's getting ready to come. Woe, that word woe means destruction to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. People that love this world, people that love this society, woe is coming to them. For the devil, the deceiver, is come down onto you having great wrath because he know that he have a short time. That's why you got sloppy news like this talking about a hate preacher was responsible for this terrorist attack on March 22nd, a highly known satanic pagan day to these uh, satanic worshippers, to these pagan demons, okay, these banking families secret societies, these witches, these warlocks, this is a high satanic day for them, man. So the fact that they putting out this information and it's sloppy like this, you know they got a short time, man. You should already know they got a short time. Because they trying to get things going. They trying to get things rapid. Because they see the prophecies going. They see brothers is waking up through the spirit of Yahweh, Nimi, Yahweh, Shai. They see women waking up. In this, in this wicked ass society, they see children waking up, man. Come on now. People don't believe in the society the way they used to. Because these are the signs of the times, man. The Lord is waking waking up his people, man. He's, he's even waking up these other nations to know what's really going on. People don't trust the government like that. And these other nations even know who the children of Israel are. And you got, you got people of the other nations condemning these gutter rats man condemning these fake ass jews israelis man condemning them letting them know that they don't even belong in the holy land so how much more of a control thing they're gonna have on society man they gotta do something they gotta come down and and to those that's in the faith this is something you're supposed to rejoice in because <laughs> this is what the lord said was gonna happen before we get delivered your work is not in vain but best believe your faith is going to get tested, man. Your work is going to get tested. Ain't no free rides here. Ain't no, ain't no just being fly by night and just calling yourself a believer and going to church or opening up a book or watching a video and knowing who you are. You're going to get a free, free meal. Nah, man. Everyone's got to work for their seat, for their ticket, for their election sake, man. Everybody has to. And for those that claim to be in the faith or claim to love the Lord and you fall in short, man, you, you, hey, you fast, pray, seek the Lord ten times more, do what you got to do. You got things going on in your household that's preventing you from going as hard as you can for the Lord and edifying his sheep. Fast, pray, humble yourself, man. Pray that the Lord gives you that strength and rebuke the devil, man. Rebuke the adversary. Rebuke the spiritual demon of Satan, man. Ain't no time to be getting distracted in these last days. Ain't no time to be getting fearful. Ain't no time to be getting weak. This is a time we're supposed to be getting stronger and stronger, man. Exercising our faith. And if you can't see that, then you, you got to do what you got to do. I can't save you. The men that I learn from can't save me. And the brothers that I love and labor with, my family, I can't save them. You got to seek your salvation from your house in the name of your house shot. This is Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Shall suffer. Some of you shall suffer, but don't fear it. Okay, the devil, the deceiver, because that's what that word is referring on. So it's not talking about somebody with, with horns and a, pit, and, a, and a pitchfork and a tail. Nah, the word devil simply means deceiver. The children of the devil, the children of the wicked, or the Edomites. Malachi, the first chapter. Genesis, the 23rd chapter, 25th chapter. Look it up, man. Romans, the ninth chapter. Jacob, have I loved, but Esau, have I hated. These Rothschilds, red child, red shield, red children. Edom, Adawam. The blood shows forth in their skin. The curse of Cain that was put upon them. To let it be known who's the wicked. 
They're going to come down with great wrath because they know that they have but a short time. And part of that great wrath is going to be martial law, warlike law, lockdown on society. To some of us that may have to get thrown into these prisons, a.k.a. concentration camps, Scripture says that's how we're going to be tried. Our faith is going to be tried. We shall be a testimony against them. Be thou faithful unto death and we will receive a crown of life. Be thou faithful unto death, and we shall receive a crown of life. The scripture says the dead in the house of shots shall rise first. A lot of us, hey, and I'm even applying it to myself. Those that claim that they love the Lord and, and can't go as hard or have someone blocks in their life to not push as hard or give this gospel as much as you can to everyone, like a fire building up inside you, if you just gotta let it out, cry it loud and spare not. So those that have a tough time serving the Lord, seeking the Lord, okay, and sparing the truth, faith may be tested on that level. It's easy to say that you're down for somebody, but are you willing to die for somebody, especially the Heavenly Father? It's one thing to say that you love him, but if you can't call yourself doing the work, serving him, working out your soul salvation, praying, fasting, doing what you got to do, taking his word serious, fearing him, then can you really say you're willing to die? Because if that's the case, hey, we'll, we'll see where everyone's faith is at. We'll see what everyone's faith is at. Especially those that claim to love the Lord, but they 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 be on the internet volunteering to watch videos and cheering brothers on, but they ain't got no content to push out the truth either. Especially over here, where I, I labor with the spirit of Yahweh and name Yahweh Shad, that brothers be speaking about this truth while pushing out these videos. Everyone in this congregation should be pushing out videos. There's only so many times you can hear the same things be mentioned. Yo, push out videos, push out videos, push out videos, push out videos. We are going to do our part to push out this truth. Not for a victim to that, I confess. But when you get things like this, hey man, you got to pray to the Lord and just get the information out there. Regardless of what's going on and, and your vanity, you want to consider a life. Vanities are vanities, all is vanity, man. Ain't nothing that's supposed to go before the word of the Lord. Ain't nothing supposed to go before worshiping the Lord and sparing the truth. Ain't nothing supposed to go over edifying the sheep. Scriptures say you're supposed to hate your life, man. Meaning disregard your life. Don't fall in love with the flesh. Don't fall in love with this world. Don't worry about what you're going to eat and drink. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of the heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah. This is the time right now to go strong in faith, to go strong in spirit, to proclaim and, and boldly let this word be known. And, and reading on in it, because the times that we're coming into, you're going to see it for yourself, man. Especially as the temptation comes, the hour of temptation. This is going into the book of Revelation, chapter 13. Verse 16. It says, And he calls of all, both small and great. Well, I'm going to start at verse 15. Why not? And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and the in, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. The beast is referring on to what the scriptures has depicted as that beast with seven heads and ten horns. Which, when you look into it spiritually, what it represents is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, and the EU, European Union. That's going to be that beast, that military might that's going to bring forth this image, aka this system. This new world order, this new order of the ages. And as far as worshiping the image, that's what verse 16 is going to go into, taking the mark. Those that will not take the mark or will not worship or will not bow down and, and, and forsake the Lord shall be killed. Verse 16, and he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. That word mark in the Greek is karagma, meaning an incision, a cutting in the flesh. And as far as what that cutting of the flesh is, it's referring on to the RFID radio frequency identification device, the mark of the beast. That's what that is. Where they're literally going to have a cashless society. And the same chips that be inside the debit cards, credit cards, freaking IDs. That's what's going to be inside the people. That's going to be the new money system. That's going to be the new health records. 
that's going to be the new identification system. Passports, this, this is what you're going to have in order to be able to buy, sell, pay bills, travel, go to work, pay rent. This is, what, this is what's going to be required. That's going to be the test of faith right there. In your right hand or on your foreheads, meaning the place of dominance, because they don't automatically got to be in the, in the right hand. That word right dexio means dominant, your dominant position, your dominant power. As you can see right here, European club, this woman is getting her arm checked, her shoulder checked, and her face facial is right there. Okay, so obviously she got a identification device inside of her. It's not on the right hand or on the forehead, but that forehead, okay, that's something to identify with going according to the system. Whether it's a biometric tattoo or to those bank families who don't depend on taking these devices, they're going to control society according to the system. So that's how it's going to be in their forehead. It says in that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, and his number is 600, 3 score, and 6. That universal commercial code, product code, product number, that barcode, 666, that's what that's referring to. Don't be ignorant of what's really going on. And don't be don't be so fearful to think, God, oh, it's going to be the end or be or nah, man. Nah, nah, sister, nah, brother. You're supposed to be, man, you're supposed to be fired up for this. You're supposed to be fired up knowing that hey, if he's got to come to it, then so be it, man. The scriptures speak about martyrs. The scriptures speak about those that had to die for the faith. How much more us, man? That is a glorious death right there. To die for what you believe in, to stand up for what you believe in, believe in what you believe in your God so strongly, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, so much that you're willing to prove your faith by death, even if your head got to get chopped off. You gotta lose a limb. You gotta watch your loved ones get tortured. You don't stop the kingdom of heaven from coming down. You don't stop the fact that the Lord is coming back. You don't stop the fact that judgment is gonna be brought upon this wicked society. The word is still gonna go on. So regardless if they call you a hate preacher, especially to those that's out there in the UK, man, I pray that Yahweh in the name of Yahweh shall watch over y'all. Brothers, sisters, y'all families, y'all loved ones, keep y'all safe, keep y'all guided. Because this right here is definitely a, 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 an attack on all those in the faith, especially those that's in that area. Can't be negligent of this, man. This is definitely going to be a, a faith tester for y'all that's out there. For those that claim to, to serve the Lord and love the Lord and fear the Lord, it's going to be a test of y'all faith out there. There's going to come a time where no one's going to be preaching. But it, until that time comes, we're still supposed to boldly profess the gospel, the good news. Wickedness is being brought down. Kingdom of heaven is being established. The Lord is coming back with his children. Lord willing, we're part of that. And these other nations are going to have to pay for what they did to the Lord's chosen people. It's that simple. We've been given a chance for repentance. We've been given a chance for mercy and grace. But turn back onto the Lord in order to receive that safety. In order to receive that satisfaction. In order to receive that love. In order to receive that kindness. In order to receive Okay, in order to receive from the Lord, because there ain't nothing that we can obtain, there ain't nothing that we can take. We didn't choose the Lord. Lord, when we are the elect, He chose us. So this is what we gotta do to prove our love towards the Lord. And very well so to those that the Lord seeks fit to bless them with that grace of mercy are gonna receive spiritual power in these last days. Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord, Yahweh, from the name of Yahweh shall from the West. And his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. In the West, this specific prophecy, mainly referring on to the Western Hemisphere, Babylon, aka America, that's where the word of the Lord has been boldly brought out forth before being scattered, okay, and spread throughout the world through the through the internet. And brothers waking up, and sisters waking up through the spirit of Yahweh the name of Yahweh shot. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When the Lord comes back, he's coming back from the east, man. The land of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shaphat, that's spoken of in the book of Joel. The land of the Most High's judgment, where all these different nations are going to assemble for that third world war in the Middle East. And if they take, take their armies into Iran, it's, it's going to be done doubted for that, man. Russia's going to get involved, Saudi Arabia's going to get involved, America's going to have no choice. 
for it to get involved, especially if them Israelis get bombed first. Them gutter rats, them, them fake Jews, them Khazars, them Amalekites, them Edomites, them heathens, them Gentiles, them slaves perpetrating a fraud, lying, inheriting lies, fighting like they us, identity death. The Lord's going to come and strike that place first. And then make his way to the west and all these different locations. And when he does that, he's coming back with the heavenly host, the chariots that the scriptures speak of. So-called UFOs, unidentified from flying objects, what the society calls them, but the wheels within the wheels, as Ezekiel saw them. The chariots. The chariots. Okay? Scriptures say that the Lord maketh his cloud the chariots, because these chariots, these these vessels, these vehicles of the angels, so-called dark-skinned mighty men, they can even camouflage themselves in clouds. Make themselves look like clouds or submerge themselves into the waters. Power is coming, man. Great power is coming. And so those that the Lord seeks fit, he's going to bless them with spiritual power as that standard when the enemy comes in like a flood and stormtroopers going to get backed up. The military men going to get backed up. Just like how when they asked for the Lord, okay, when those garrisons and when the officers came looking for the Lord because Judas set it up to where he wanted to basically force the Lord's hand to fight against the Romans, not knowing that he was fulfilling the prophecy to turn against the Lord and betray him. But when they came looking for the Lord, what happened? He asked them, who are you looking for? Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I and he, and boom, pushed them back, man. Let's get, man, let's get that. Push them back, man. Brought them back. The spiritual power. How you come looking for the Lord and he tells you who he is and you fall backwards? Nah, that was power that he hit them with. You see? In order to let it be known, boom. If you if you looking for this man that you claim, the house I Nazareth, he's confessed that he's him. Therefore, let these other ones go. I'm going to read it right there, man. This is an example of power, man. Lord willing, those that have this faith, that, that serve the Lord, that are willing to ride for the Lord, die for the Lord, and speak his gospel, stand up for his, for his namesake, suffer for his namesake, and be there for your brother, be there for your, for your fellow laborer, be there for your family, be there for your sister to the best of your ability, man. The Lord's going to bless you with power. He's going to bless you with these things. This is the book of St. John, in the New Testament, chapter 18, verse 4. Yahweh shall hold his word and cause Jesus, therefore knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Yahweh shall of Nazareth. Yahweh shall save unto him, I and he, and Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he said unto them, I and he, they went backward and fell to the ground. How you gonna go backward and fall to the ground when you are the ones that was looking for the Messiah? You push y'all back, man. He flexed on y'all that power. Because if the Lord wanted to, he could have brought back 12 legions of angels to deliver him and bring down the Roman society. But it was prophecy that it had to go down the way the Heavenly Father set it up. Verse 6, as soon then as he had said on to them, I and he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Yahweh of Nazareth. Yahweh answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way, that the same might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. You see? The Lord ain't gonna lose none of his little ones. The Lord ain't gonna lose none of none of his sheep. These are the things that we gotta be mindful of. These are the things that we gotta be looking for, hoping for, because it is written. It's the words of the Lord. It's the truth. It's the gospel. It's the good news. This ain't no fairy tale. This ain't no made-up novel. This is the book, same book, reversed to the 14th chapter and the 14th verse. Actually, let me show that verse 12. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe upon me, the works that I, sh that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask my name, that will I do, that the Father Yahweh may be glorified in the Son Yahweh Shai. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. You see? The Lord is it. He had spiritual power. He healed the sick. Okay? He did those things. He fed the multitude with bread and a, and a couple of fish. He fed thousands. Okay? He healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. He helped those that wasn't able to walk, walk. He helped those that wasn't able to, to speak, talk. He cast out demons. Rebuked the adversary. He conquered death. All right? He was crucified, suffered, and raised after the third day. He raised people from the dead. Okay? He walked on water. Various things, man. The scriptures say that all the works that he did can't even be contained in books for this world to hold on to. He was doing that many miracles. Okay? So this is the type of messiah that we have this is the true living god's son man this is our big brother right here he said anything that you ask in my name i will do it that the father may be glorified in the son that the father may be glorified that the father will be glorified in the son because the father yahweh he was glorified in egypt but now it's his son's turn and the beautiful thing about it the son had it to wear Yahweh Shah, the anointed big brother, our Messiah, the first spirit created, man. Big bro got it to where those that of the elect were when were part of that. He said, ye shall be joint heirs on to me. Joint heirs with me, man. He's going to sit on thrones. We're going to have the opportunity to sit on thrones too. The men, the elect, the chosen. The governing body, those that forsake this world just like I used to forsake this world, faithful unto death just like I used faithful unto death, but I have a, a, a chance to receive that glory too. And even those who, they may not even be blessed with the same spiritual gifts as the prophets do, but they're willing to serve the Lord to the best of their ability and be brotherly unto the prophets, help unto the prophets. They going to receive a prophet's reward, as the scriptures say, too. You even got some zealots, okay, who want to take down this place by force, but they waiting on the Lord. May have did some jail time, may be incarcerated, may be in the prisons, but they hear this truth, they repent, they turn back onto the Lord, and they wait to be free. They going to even receive mercy, grace, salvation. They may very well receive power because the scriptures speak about the Lord's chosen being men of war, man. Mighty men. King David's coming back. His tabern the tabernacle of David's getting risen up, man. And if you read about the history, what happened with the Lord's chosen people, in times of war, we got busy with these other nations. Not this BS society, this effeminate society, this Queen of Heaven society, where the man is looked down upon and the woman is elevated above the man. You know, this confusion can happen inside of these different areas because the government or these heathen nations give power over to the woman. That a lot of people have lost their identity and lost their roles. Women think that they're equal to men or above men. Nah, this, that power, when that power comes, people are going to know who's the Lord's chosen. Lord willing, we part of that. Even to our own people, the scriptures say that people shall be willing in the day of that power. And a lot of our people... A lot of our people are going to have to see death all around. They're going to have to see spiritual power blessed upon the men to act right. And it just is what it is. A lot of people are lacking faith. But you know what? To the elect, to those that are part of the household of faith, that witness that blessing, that witness that grace and mercy of spiritual power, they're going to be shown grace and mercy by being protected with that spiritual power. Because it's not all about killing. It's about healing. It's about bringing forth the gospel. Okay? Bringing forth healing to our people that need it because we all need healing. Just like how the Lord healed our forefathers, healed us with this truth, healed us with this gospel, 
those that receive that spiritual power are going to be blessed to be able to heal others too, going through infirmities, man. Because all of us is, is messed up in this flesh, these chains of darkness. To our loved ones, to those that we care about, to fellow believers, the friends of the Lord, the friends of Yahweh Shah, the friends of the anointed, the friends of the Savior. He's going to allow them to have power to be able to cast off spirits that are messing with our people. Heal those that are going through physical ailments, man. Even bring those back from the death that may have to be martyrs on this side. These are the things that we glory in and look forward to because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is at hand. Repent and seek the Lord's mercy. Because with things like this, news like this, you can't be ignorant of the times that we live in. You cannot be ignorant of the times that we live in. All praise, honor, and glory goes on to Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shah. Forever and never. To those that also serve and worship him in spirit and in truth, salute unto you. To those that died for the word of the Lord already, honors unto you. Salutes unto the righteous zeal. Salutes unto those that's been putting in work, that's been presenting their bodies a living sacrifice. To those that fear the Lord and to those that are just waking up in these last days, seek the Lord, man. Don't second guess your faith. Don't second guess the times that you're living in. Serve the Lord fast, pray, humble yourself, do what you got to do, not for just yourself, but your family's sake, and for your soul salvation's sake too, there's a better way, man. It's, it ain't just this world, it ain't just this death, it ain't just this music, it ain't just your job, it ain't just what's going on in politics, it ain't just what's going on in the neighborhood, it's bigger than you, it's bigger than us, it's bigger than me, this is the words of the Lord. Seek the Lord, seek his grace, seek his mercy, repent, pray unto him, ask for forgiveness, ask for strength to those that's weak, and the Lord will give it to you. If you ask in faith, ask in faith, ask in faith, and keep the faith, and be faithful unto death. Shalom, stay strong.